In the Battle of the RF Bands gang, we know that there's a lot of different competing players, right? There's some different ways that we can send out signals, uh, maybe at the 2.4 gigahertz or maybe at the 5 gigahertz range. But I want to show you some of the other players in this game. There are some other wireless standards that operate at different frequencies. These are kind of niche players, right? They have a special role to play. We don't see them predominantly. Many of them are brand new or just being made available in 2015, 2016. So let's take a look at some of these specialty uh, spectrum utilizers. First couple here are going to be sub 1 gigahertz, so below 1 gigahertz, like the old 900 megahertz cordless phones we used to use. So these, uh, this first one, 802.11ah, uh, depending on the country, the specific sub gigahertz frequency varies, right? So it's roughly uh, somewhere around 900 megahertz in most of countries. The channel width can vary to as little as 1 megahertz. Wow. Remember with 802.11, uh, uh, let's say B or G, we were at 22 megahertz, so much smaller channels. And yet it can occupy as little as 100 kilobits per second to as many as 40 megabits per second. So some decent throughput, uh, not 802.11G, but better than 802.11B, and considering the low frequency and low channel widths, pretty impressive. Distance, not bad, less than a kilometer, but still able to occupy uh, a fair amount of range. Again, those low frequencies have good penetration and decent distance. Now, what we see is that this thing is really designed to support an Internet of Things configuration. What we expect is to have an access point that then is kind of providing an umbrella to allow all sorts of different devices to communicate uh, with this guy that can then go to a sensor device that can be used for management. Maybe it allows for Internet access and it can be managed through the cloud. The great thing is that the device talk right, as they talk to the management system, does not in any way, shape, or form have to conflict with your wireless communication that's being used to download Netflix or remote into the office or whatever else you're using. So it's really a parallel but uncompeting frequency range, right, way down here, sub gigahertz, that allows us to fill, fill that special need. Could you throw your Internet of Things devices on a standard 802.11 uh, BGN network? Of course you could, but it's going to slow down that network. The great thing here is it can occupy kind of a side space. All right, here's another niche use. Uh, you want rural broadband. Well, rural broadband can be had in a lot of different ways, but one method is by using 802.11af, which operates at the low-level UHF and VHF frequencies, the same ones that we see licensed for use at uh, for television. And in fact, uh, uh, Wi-Fi TV or TV white space, as it's called, actually occupies this range, and it's able to send out broadband rates not, uh, again, less than 300 megabits per second. Again, when you're talking broadband, internet, and TV, that's not bad at all. And again, a distance of less than uh, five kilometers or three miles, so a decent range for there to be, uh, essentially, in a rural location, one dedicated high-speed link that goes to a tower that then can support these, uh, right, these rural homes to be able to have internet access, internet and TV. That's the idea here. And again, kind of cool, it's uh, got a database to be able to ensure that it is not conflicting with the licensed television channels that might be running at UHF or VHF. Let's keep on going, gang. The next one is... Uh, 802.11y. And I got to be honest, this slide's a little bit mislabeled because it is not sub 1 gigahertz. Notice, there it is operating at the 3.7 gigahertz range. So this is really in between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It's riding right in the middle, filling a special need. What is that need? Well, let's look at the properties here. Uh, we see that it's operating at 20 megahertz channels. Okay, stand, sounds about right for something in that range. Uh, license fee. Ooh, so this one's actually a license-based process. Like when you license for a radio station or a television station, this one requires a license fee. Uh, and again, so this means it's for commercial use only, operates up to 54 megabits per second. Now, remember, that was the same level of speed that we would see out of 802.11b. But unlike an 802.11b network, this thing can go up to five or more kilometers. So again, this is similar to what we saw in our 802.11a a, um, uh, AF, to make sure I get the right letter there, AF configuration, but 
Instead of a rural situation supporting broadband, this is more for companies to be able to provide their own backhaul or wireless bridges uh, between buildings bet uh, across a larger campus. Okay, so again, filling that special need. Last one, 802.11 AD. So this one's crazy. Extreme high frequency, the EHF range. How extreme? Well, gang, how about 64 gigahertz? That's way up there. That's, that's a lot more than five gigahertz, right? So think about how much faster our waveforms are going into an access point, right? Very high frequency rate. That means more information sent through. Oh, and how fat is that pipe? 2.16 gigahertz. That's huge. Uh, so a fat channel, high frequency. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I, I think I want this, right? Uh, operates in an ISM band and gives us up to seven gigabits per second. Sweet. Now, any caveats, anything that uh, might make me say that's not, you know, the, the, the perfect toast to have every morning? Well, the answer is right there. Only one to 10 meters of range. So essentially, I'm using this instead of a short uh, fiber optic or a short 10 gigahertz uh, Ethernet link because of some physical limitation that would prevent me from being able to just drop a wire because it's really only going the same distance. In fact, it's going a shorter distance than I could get out of most wires, right? Only one to 10 meters. So I could connect some buildings together. I could set up a link between uh, devices that do not have uh, the ability to have a wired connection to each other for whatever reason. Yes, we can we can put this in the way, but be careful if you're thinking that you could set this up easily. Uh, remember that this super, uh, or I should say, extremely high frequency range has low penetration. It's not going to do a great job of going through walls, so it really needs to have some open space between them in order for it to be effective. All right, so these are all emergency frequency spectrums uh, since you know 2007, 2014, 2015, 16. These different uh, ranges are coming into play. And so you may see them implemented more and more and recognize these are not going to conflict with your standard Wi-Fi, your standard Wi-Fi in your networks. Why? They're all operating at different frequency spectrums. That means that uh, just like if I am talking to you and someone else is blowing a dog whistle and, and uh, a dog hears it, that's two separate communications going on at the same time without conflict because they operate at different frequencies. So that works for us, not against us.